everybody. My name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, you know, there's so much to say, and it's all been said, and there's so little to say, and we need to say more. You know, we're in a place together here where we know that something somehow is amiss that something became askew, that something disharmonized with all of us here, with all of us on this planet. And, and we're coming into a place now where that is no longer acceptable to more and more of us, that something almost has to give, that something has to reawaken or awaken or, or be realized more or, or be in recognition more. That we can no longer allow the, the smallness and the separateness and the, the seeming divisions among us rule us in how we proceed with each other. That the time is now and has been now and will continue to be now. for us to know what we really are, for us to know the destiny of the human species on this planet, of us to know that we are the guardians of, of the trees and the plants and the mountains and the animals and the, and the oceans, for us to know that we are the guardians and the caretakers of ourselves and each other, that we are in this together, that this one small planet, if you go as the astronauts do, they look down and see this little ball, this little blue ball that we make create so much havoc on. And we know that there's a way that we could be together and be in collaboration and be in creativity and be in cooperation and be in tolerance and be in joy and be in connection and experience a true bliss, a true unconditional love, a true recognition and a realization and experience of who we really are and we need it we want it and it's here and for us here at bridging i mean we see this as such an extraordinary opportunity for us to come together and for us to share share this i mean i was talking to somebody earlier we shoot two shows a night when we shoot and i was shooting to the guest on the first show that you know from the very beginning we've been doing this for 13 years and it's always been dedicated to the oneness what is the message here dedicated to that unconditional love that root the heart of the human species the heart of god the heart of of life is that experience of the love of the oneness of the unconditional experience the vastness of what we god truth love are and that's our opportunity now, and, and such an opportunity. And, and as so much of the old is crumbling, the old paradigms, the old ways of being, the old ways of we interact with each other and money and, and relationships, they're changing, they're breaking down because they don't work. They're, they're dying out of their own disharmony. And we have to come together people who are watching the show, people who are doing the show, people who can feel the vibration, can feel the activations, can feel the increasing energies and build those new paradigms based on love and dedication and build those places where we can come together on this planet and do those television shows and radio shows and internet things and internet sites and, and everything. Everything has to come from that new root, the new root of love. And that is an extraordinary opportunity for us here. And, you know, we all really want to take it because if we're doing that, if we're serving the love, our lives will be blissful. Our lives will be collaborative. They will be creative. They will be rooted in the heart. And that once again, you know, a guest has come in from Hawaii to, to California to share his gifts and his story and his dedication and his commitment to that love and that passion with you, with us, with the world. Because now with 
YouTube and Google. I mean, these shows within a certain amount of time while we get them together are available all over the world 24-7 on the most secure servers on the planet. And we hear from you and we know it's reaching you. And we know the commitment that more and more people are having to that connection. And so tonight we have Dreaming Bear with us, who's an internationally re renowned spoken word artist. The foundation for Dreaming Bear's work as a transformational artist is just a highly personal, amazing story of living on this planet and seeing the horrors of this planet and seeing what this disharmony can, can manifest and then what love can manifest. He's the author of seven inspirational books, two spoken word CDs. Uh, he travels the world with the message of unconditional love, forgiveness, and the fulfilling of each one of our human destinies, our human potentials. And we have two beautiful videos of him talking, you know, in various places around the world, and just, just beautiful videos. And as most of you know, we're in the middle of this extraordinary international art project that came as a dream, it came as a vision. For us to reach out to the world from this this source is bridging cameras to these shows that go out all over the world and say, please join us. Join us in creativity, join us in collaboration, join us in love to create a new original piece based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth. No time frames, no deadlines, no paperwork, whatever medium, whatever size, just get it to us here. We'll show it on the show. We'll have a beautiful uh, art project site, Heaven to Earth Art will sing the praises of, of that inspirational art, of that healing. It was supposed to be, as each person did that, an acupuncture, a healing for the planet. And we've been getting extraordinary pieces of all different kinds and sizes and jewelry and glass pieces and wood pieces and acrylics and sculptures from all over the world. Go to Heaven to Earth Art, heaven, T-O, Earth, A-R-T dot com, and you'll see literally 200 extraordinary manifestations all different of bridging heaven and earth. So we have two tonight, uh, Bill Gerald and uh, Bianca, beautiful Bianca. One's a wood piece and one's a, a glass piece, a stained glass piece, just different, extraordinary, unbelievable. So join me in a short meditation and we'll see the first Dreaming Bear video and then Dreaming Bear will be us and the art and just, it's an opportunity. So please join me in a short meditation. <clears throat> Thank you. So we're going to start tonight's show with a beautiful, beautiful uh, video of Dreaming Bear doing his transformational spoken word magic. Uh, you'll see it, you'll hear it. Okay, Dreaming Bear, enjoy. <laughs> My name is Dreaming Bear, and I am here as an ambassador of the spirit of aloha, the spirit of love, the spirit of peace. I come from a very mixed heritage. My mother is Native American from the Cherokee tradition, and so I was raised in that tradition, but my father is Palestinian from Akka, Abu Manaka. And it's a great honor and a privilege to be among you beautiful beings today, because my heart bows to your heart in this moment. My soul kisses your soul's feet because I see in each one of you Ani Roy et Elohim Bacham Ana Bashuf Rab Nafik Ana Bashuf Rab Nafik I see the beloved, I see the essence of the divine in each person that I meet and as I travel this world from country to country, from place to place with one hope, one intention, that we as a generation can do something that no generation before has done. And when I look around this circle, I know that it's happening. I know that we are the generation that's going to change the way the whole world views peace. Because there is already peace. All we have to do is love each other without shame. All we have to do is learn to love ourselves and each other without shame, and there will always be peace when that begins to happen. 
And as I see beautiful German faces mixed with beautiful Palestinian faces and beautiful Israeli faces, I can't help but think to myself, it's happening. There's peace happening in this circle, in this moment. What happens when we all begin to say to every heart we meet, unconditional love? What if that were the first words you said to everyone you met from now on, unconditional love? If we begin to love the world without conditions, despite the different colors of our skin, because our hearts are the same color, our hearts are the same color. We are one people. And while this wall stands, it stands as a metaphor for the wall that we have erected around our hearts as a people of this planet. Everywhere you go, people are separating each other with labels. I'm this and you're that. But the truth is we are each other. And in your smile, in your beautiful, beautiful smile, there is salvation at last. What if you picked up the smile you dropped and put it back on your face? And everyone you meet, with joy in your heart, you say, I love you, and I don't need anything from you, except just let me love you without conditions. When we can do that as a generation, then this wall will crumble. Just like the wall in Berlin crumbled, just like every wall that has ever been erected in the name of separation will crumble when we see the beauty in each other. I travel the world spreading this one message that you are the milk and honey of existence. We call this land the land of milk and honey, the land of Canaan. That's my last name. I know something about this land of milk and honey, this land of prophets. But the truth is, as beautiful as this land is, you are the milk and you are the honey. And the most enlightened person in this gathering is right there. <laughs> She knows more than we have forgotten in the past 30 years. Right now, there is Buddha among us. There is Christ among us. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. So the incredible art you're seeing between Dreaming Bear and I is Bill Gerald's Anastasia. It's a wood sculpture. I mean, just look at it. It's just extraordinary. He has an amazing story. We're hoping to get Bill on as a guest, uh, you know, in the next season to just tell his extraordinary story, how he came to create all these extraordinary angels out of wood that he had never done before, and he had this illness and uh, amnesia, and then it came forth that he knew how to do these in such extraordinary way. And one is going to be presented uh, fairly soon to the Pope and, you know, hand-delivered and just you know, he's just exploding with them now. So, Anastasia, so dreaming very welcome. Aloha, beautiful Alan, and to your beautiful community. Thank you so much for having me. I want to first honor you for all that you've been doing for these last many years. You've been truly bridging heaven and earth, and I see that. I'm so honored to be here with you today. Great, thank you very much. So, people just saw that beautiful video mm. in the first half. Why don't you talk a little about the significance of that, and then we get into your story a little Definitely. bit. Definitely. That was at the end of a year-long journey into the Middle East, all around the world, really, called the World Tenderness Tour. I believe that tenderness is a way of life for myself, and in a world of cruelty and kindness, tenderness is a revolutionary act. So I went through the Middle East, quite literally that very video was filmed on the border of Palestine and Israel next to a 45 foot wall in the city of Bethlehem at a place called the Tent of Nations. And it was a gathering of Jews, Muslims and peace pilgrims from Germany. And we came together in the name of unconditional love as you so well know and embody here at Bridging Heaven and Earth. Well, that's beautiful. So why don't you tell a little about your story about how you know, your parents came from different backgrounds and how your life went through all those changes early on. Well, I was born to a Cherokee mother at the age of 16, a runaway Cherokee mother who met a runaway refugee father from Lebanon who came over here on a student visa. They met each other in Mideast, met Midwest as it were, and this firecracker was born, as my grandmother used to call me, a firecracker. A new breed, she would say, and my life was marked by dreams. The name Dreaming Bear comes from my grandmother. My mother was 16, and they tried to encourage her to have an abortion while she was pregnant with me. And in the night, she received a dream, and an angel came to her in this dream and said, don't kill this child. He has something beautiful to share with the world. So based on that dream, my life was literally saved. So my grandmother took to calling me Dreaming Bear, and when she passed on into the other realms, I decided to adopt that as my my 
nomenclature into this world, that maybe I could dream something beautiful and bring something of value back into this world. So I've been all over the world, lived all over the place, 17 countries, 26 states in the U.S., all over, places like Russia, Nicaragua, most recently Palestine and Israel, just to name a few, with one message, and that message was that we can transform darkness into light. Having come from a life of darkness, watching my own little brother die at the age of eight years old, just feet in front of me, my sister kidnapped on our way to school at the same age of eight years old, living in foster care, living with uh, different kinds of people to the age I was 14, in which I left home and began this journey of mine of self-rediscovery, I like to call it. So I've seen some of the darkest places on the planet. I, I know what it's like to hurt. I know what it's like to bleed. I know what it's like to cry out in the night. There may be people in your community that are listening right now who say, my story of pain is so great that I can't hardly see through to my authenticity. And I would just say to those people that we go through the worst so that we can become our best. That sometimes we have to go through heaven to get to that place that is beyond what we call heaven, which is that place where we can touch each other. My grandmother always said, you want to touch heaven? You just reach out and touch the person sitting next to you. And so I've learned in this life that in a world of cruelty, if we can just learn to be kind-hearted, kindness is a revolutionary act. A world where bullets and bombs are flying when we just smile at each other, that in and of itself is enough to bring heaven right into our hearts. Yeah, actually, we talk a lot about on the show. I mean, you know, it's not the first time it's been said, but, mm -hmm. you know, it would be a good start if we just treated others as we'd like to be treated. Exactly. I mean, who wants to be treated like crap? Exactly. exactly. So, just simple, nice, the simple. golden rule. <laughs> Try that for, you know. So, so, and then you started writing poetry. And I began writing as a catharsis. I thought if I could begin to write or rewrite existence, reclaim lost narratives, re-identify ourselves with something more than this story that we've been told, I think that we're living in the most phenomenal time in history. We could not have hoped to have been a more activated generation. And by all means, I feel that my purpose in this world is to awaken the sleeping giants of greatness in this generation, to bring something new under the sun. Even though Ecclesiastes says there is nothing new, I believe that there is something new and that that something is us being authentic. Now, you, you hear this word enlightenment tossed around, and my word for enlightenment is simply authenticity. That is to say, it's not some far off, unattainable moral obligation of pretending to be something that we're not. It's as simple as us being ourselves fully, and then giving others permission to do the same. Like a constellation of compassion, if you will. And if you think about it, a star never says to another star, well, you're shining way too bright for me. You know, you should calm down a little bit. This is, a, as you said on many of your bridging shows in the past, which I've had the privilege of being witness to, that it's about us being in the new paradigm. And that is a paradigm which I call the love illusion. So instead of an evolution, we have a love illusion. And what is the love illusion? It's a love evolution and it's a love revolution. It's, a, it's no longer survival of the fittest, that outdated, outmoded paradigm of competition of the fiercest where only the strongest and most ferocious make it out alive. It's a thriving of the kindest. It's a, it's a, it's a hugging and kissing our way into enlightenment. And that is to say that if we could just honor each other with what my grandmother would call our personal drum circle, which is when we, we, we hug each other, it's our own private drum circle. If we could just hug each other long enough, hold each other long enough, then we might give the whole world a reason to start all over again. That would be a good start. That would be a good start. <laughs> you know? That's why everywhere I go I say aloha right off the bat, because that word aloha actually means pure, unconditional love. So when you come to Hawaii, which I call the New Eden, or the, the New Mecca, because it's really a spiritual pilgrimage place, what you immerse yourself in is the spirit of pure, unconditional love. And I think that if we're going to be about something that the world has never seen before, if we're going to do something no generation has ever done before, then it's going to be loving each other without shame. Because as I was traveling on that journey in the Middle East, a four-and-a-half-year-old girl taught me the most valuable lesson of my life. I was standing amidst educated, learned people, priests and shamans. All these great beings had gathered, and I asked them all what could give us a more peaceful planet. And only a four-year-old girl said something I'd never heard before, and she said, there is already peace. 
All we have to do is love each other without shame. And that's why everywhere I go in this world, I get I'm people to grab... I'm surprised she even knew shame. I know. And a half. It's an interesting concept. It's a, because usually it takes a while to really get into shame. But this new generation coming through yeah, is they're unlike they're any generation they're before. They're pretty amazing. Anyone who knows the crystal children know that they're a step ahead of the game. So she taught me that if we could just be like children again, if we could go to the playground of pure potential, playgrounds of peace, as it were, and tap each other's hearts on the shoulder with something sweet to offer, that's the invitation that I bring to this world, that we can become children again through what I call our second innocence, or a re-fascination, a re-bewilderment, a re-rising in love rather than falling in love with life itself, with every heartbeat, with every breath, with every moment, with every eye, to literally see our beloved in the looks on every face. And if we could treat one another with that same tenderness that we treat our beloved, that is to say, if I could say to you, how can I serve you better? How can I be more kind? Then in that intention, I think we give this world permission to shine in ways that it's never known before. Well, whether it was never known before or not doesn't matter, but it would be real nice to know it now. It'd be right. It'd be right. Right now would be a good time for us to start. To see how it works <laughs> right now, right? Exactly. So you, you, you write these poems, which, and you'd like to do one? Why I would. You? Yeah, yeah, I, would. So I call them you? song lines, actually. Yeah. They're, and that's based on uh, what the aboriginals call the all at once time or the every when. And it's sort of a dream time. So I want to ask everyone listening just to slip into another dimension with me for a moment and let yourself be playfully innocent without having to be politically or spiritually correct. I want only for your heart to be happy, my dears, and I know it will be once you reach within yourself and gently untie your wings. Because no matter what brand of religion we've experimented with, or what kinds of social contracts we've agreed to, few things in this life are as sacred and dear as a sweet, tender kiss and wild, holy laughter. <laughs> so before becoming intergalactic peace ambassadors, we must first become internal peace embodiors. Truth is gracefully walking a tightrope of elegance between us, while the beloved plays peekaboo at the universe from behind an open secret artfully expressed upon the stained glass windows of your eyes. Like pilgrims discovering the promised land of each other's milk and honey drenched laughter seeing every heart in existence as a star, undulating on a midnight ocean, and coming together to kiss the cheek of innocence, saying, you are so astonishingly beautiful. Your tenderness is a playground where these words become a merry-go-round of meaning down the superslide of sensations and <gasps> being skin into a sandbox of pure imagination. Let's leave behind the emotional seesaws of up, I'm happy, down, I'm sad, up, I'm happy, down, I'm sad, up, I'm happy, down, I'm sad, until we're exhausted, leaving the bottoms of our souls sore. Instead, come swing with me into the arms of eternity and let's take a flying midair leap of faith into the freedom and fascination of diving face first into forgiveness like a child running headlong into a backyard pile of flame-colored fall leaves. Just disrobe your essence of the need to be right. Undress your mind of the ego and get naked with me in this honesty. We can be like brand newborn babies in a bubble bath of beauty, knowing neither guilt nor shame, only the purest parts of each other's flower petal hearts blooming in divine holy mischief because our prayers 
are magic carpet rides for manifesting our dreams. Our dreams are interdimensional doorways through which our souls become the nexus point for experiencing every possible version of reality. Sadly, there is no 12-step program on becoming practically enlightened. I checked. There's no shortcut, surefire solutions on being a so-called spiritual success. Sure, social showmanship sells a lot of t-shirts, but it's authenticity that performs the true alchemy of giving broken hearts back their song. So I wed myself to this innocence. I marry my soul to the fascination of seeing the beloved as everyone. Here I am again, throwing pebbles of playfulness at your heart's bedroom window in the middle of the night, saying, Psst, hey, you, come play with me. I know you have to get up early in the morning for work, but come play with me. I know your hesitation tells you I look strange and maybe you shouldn't, but come play with me. I know you have a million different reasons for not leaving your comfort zones and being wild and carefree, but come play with me. Leave behind all your worries, all your doubts and obligations, keeping us from exploring the adventure of our constant expansion, because the time for following in the footsteps of former avatars and so-called ascended masters is over. The time for following is over. Why not now instead accept the invitation that the guru of your own glowing heart has sent you in the form of an opportunity to be a living embodiment of source essence, an infinite vessel for divine creativity. Like a child poet, on the playgrounds of peace, these words are my heart's tender intent, tapping your soul on the shoulder, saying, Hey, beautiful, I got a pocket full of planets and moons that we can use to play a cosmic game of marbles. What do you say? Let's be playmates for life. Oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I like your audience. <laughs> yeah, they're beautiful. They are. They're Would really you mind if I, if I got them to do a pinky promise of peace? Uh, you know, I don't know how, you know, I think they could. Yeah, oh, we could do it on the break. Either way. Grab the pinky of the person sitting next to you. And if you're at home, grab the pinky of the person. If you're not sitting with anyone, grab your own pinky. And look in the eyes of someone sitting next to you. And if you can be like that little four and a half year old girl, do this when you're with somebody that you love and with somebody that you don't even know. And look at that person in the eyes and look deep and see if you can see God looking back. And if you can, say, I see God in you. I see God in you. Now look even deeper. And, and if we can be like that four and a half year old girl, say to that person, and I love you without shame. And I love you without shame. Now give that person a hug and a kiss on each cheek. <laughs> mwah, mwah. <laughs> and that's how we do the aloha spirit. Uh-huh. Hugs and kisses, that's the new revolution. Yeah, it's, it's very powerful. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's hard to be conceptual in that. And that's where, you know, mind comes in and all the separations come in. So how can we, you know, almost like disconnect from where the separation lives? How can we heal the heart? I mean, that's exactly. what we've been talking about. Exactly. I'm really aware of more than ever before that our consciousness is seated in our heart space that our heart carries 5,000 times the electromagnetic carrying capacity of our brain and that quite literally the heart as well as our intestines and our, our stomach are filtered with all kinds of neural cells to help us have a sort of thought that goes along with the heart. And so what the heart comprehends, the mind, mind can't even begin to conceive as we all know. You know, we're using heart and mind, even that's a separation. We're just talking Words. energetics. And, exactly. Right. Exactly. Just to, to heal the disharmony, mm -hmm. you know, to come into the recognition of what we are, the one, however that would be. To bridge heaven to earth. earth.
There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so why don't we watch the second half of that extraordinary, if there's anything you want to say about it, that's the second half. We're starting it with the You Are the Buddha. The, the really important part of this is that you have former enemies on the front lines of war holding pinkies, declaring their love for each other. And I think that if that's possible in today's age, with what is happening in the Middle East, if you turn on your television, you can see that enemies can come together and see the best in each other. If it's possible in Palestine and Israel, it's possible in your own beautiful heart. Okay, so what we'll do is see the second half of, of that particular video, video of Dreaming there, and then we'll come back and see some more art, a beautiful stained glass piece by Bianca, and we'll have more more hard work with uh, Dreaming Bear, so enjoy. <laughs> she knows more than we have forgotten in the past 30 years. Right now, there is Buddha among us, there is Christ among us. And if we can begin to see each other one last time as children again, to tap each other's hearts on the shoulder and say, let's play together. Let's forget all of our differences and let's play together. Let's just choose to see the best in each other and believe that the world will see the best in us in return. Because I know the story. My family right now is in a Palestinian refugee camp in southern Lebanon. And that camp is a brutal place for any children to grow up. I have two brothers, two sisters, my father, my grandparents. I know what this war has done. I'm a first-hand example of what it's done. I know that people want to return here, but more than that, I know that it can't happen until we set the example. It's not about changing the world, it's about inspiring the world. Inspiring the world to see how beautiful they are again. So my one prayer today is that you would remember how beautiful you really are. You are more magnificent, and the person sitting next to you is more magnificent than you've ever given yourself or them credit for. So in the name of unconditional love, grab someone's hand sitting next to you. Everyone, let's grab hands. It's okay to hold hands. <laughs> let's do away with that invisible separation of space. Now we're connected. We're an unbroken circle of intention. What if our intention today is to send out waves we talk about peace to send out waves of intention. And what if our collective intention can just be this, that the whole world will begin to forget all their reasons for holding grudges, that we can begin to forgive each other for all the mistakes of the past, and that we would set the example for this generation to be the change we seek, as Gandhi said. Because an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth makes the whole world blind and toothless. <laughs> so let's begin now to send out to send out the vibration of unconditional love. Can we do that? And we have one word I want to teach you, and this is the last word I want to teach you, and that is a word that we have in the Native American culture, Omatakwe Asin. Do you know this word? All the we are seen. It means all my relatives. It means that everything from the sky to the earth to you to this tree is related to us. We come from our mother, this earth, this beautiful planet we've been given. Let's return to knowing and seeing the beauty in each other and the beauty in this great world that we've been given. Let's send out that word, Omatak we are seen. All our relatives, all of our ancestors are here. Right now, there's Moses. And right now, there's Muhammad. And right now, there's Jesus. And right now, there's Buddha. And right now, there's Gandhi. And right now, Mother Teresa. And right now, there's us. And we are going to be the generation that transforms existence. Are you with me on this? <laughs> Come on, people. <laughs> so on the count of three, let's all say, I hold together. That's the good way of saying yes. <laughs> let's do it with passion. Let's have some passion in our peace. Let's create playgrounds of peace. On the count of three, one, two, three. Ah Hi everybody, welcome back. So that was a beautiful video. So the incredible piece of 
art that you know was done specifically for the Bridging Heaven Earth Healing Art Project was by beloved Bianca. It's uh, called Peace. It's a stained glass piece of extraordinary beauty, extraordinary commitment and dedication because I was there while it was being made and it is just extraordinary. I have so many of these pieces coming in because the intent is so much about love, is so much about bridging heaven and earth, is so much about the unconditional love, the joyousness, the, the childlikeness that we've been talking about for the whole show. So. So here we are again. Beautiful. You couldn't have hoped to sit next to a beautiful piece like this. Well, you had two beautiful pieces, and you know, it's, you know, not. We've had a lot of you know paintings and acrylics, mm. and but tonight we seemingly had you know two, you know, different kind of pieces: mm -hmm. the wood piece of Bill and and this Bianca. So I mean, there's just so much manifestation now, so many different forms of love coming out. The acceleration is happening. Yeah, People yeah. are coming into their awareness of what they really are. It's beautiful to see when the creativity flowers like that. What it yeah, produces. Just, it just like explodes mm -hmm. out in so mm -hmm. many ways. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, one of the reasons we did the art project. It, it gives somebody an opportunity to do it, and then an opportunity for the world to experience it. Exactly. So it's beautiful. It is. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> Vital. So, uh, what what have you noticed? I mean, you've been traveling around all over the mm -hmm. world for you know a considerable amount of human time now. Mm -hmm. What have you seen as like an evolution of p more people willing to join hands, more people wanting an end of the separation and division? Why don't you talk I a see it happening all over the world. I was just featured in a documentary called Without Walls by director Michaela Lev, in which we focused on the phenomenon of separation around this planet and how that separation is coming to disillusion, back into oneness, back into unity, unification, of course is the fundamental principle of all physics of all sciences unification is the underlying pervading theme of the zero point field so it's only a matter of time before our fragile eggshell ego minds come into alignment with that sense of total unity and I see that happening everywhere I go I see people starting to say I'm tired of the old story I'm tired of being told what I can and can't do I'm tired of borders I'm tired of walls and then simultaneously the old paradigm bucks itself up and wants to say, well, let's throw a wall up in the Middle East and let's throw a wall up in South Korea and let's throw a wall up over here. And, but you see that the mass of people, Thoreau once said that the masses of men lead lives of quiet desperation. And that has been happening for quite some time in our society. But now that mass of people leading those lives of quiet desperation are coming back into that sense of awareness. Like Thoreau said, that there is no teacher so great as experience and as they're experiencing their own sense of internal awareness their own sense of internal relationship the Native Americans call it Omataki Asin I talk about it in that video and that is all my relatives all my ancestors my grandmother always taught me that the stars are our cousins and that when we look into the night sky we're seeing ourselves as we truly are and furthermore, that when we look into each other's eyes, we already know everything there is to know about each other. So I see that as I travel this planet, the recognition begins with that look like we're having right now, where we see our sweethearts shining back at us from each other's glimmering eyes, as it were. And that awareness, that recognition is taking place across the planet in such a phenomenal way. It's exciting to see it begin to happen. It's exciting to see nonviolent peace movements beginning to emerge in Palestine, where people are starting to realize that suicide bombs isn't the way to go, but that we need love aside bombs, as it were. And instead of terrorists, what we need are tenderness terrorists, people dropping love bombs. So it's changing. And I believe that 2008 was our time to accelerate, and 2009 is our time to shine. So as we begin this glow of goodness, this glow of gratitude for all that is, I see it increasing exponentially. <laughs> now there's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, really. And you wanted to do another thing, and everybody in the audience was saying, I do, to, yeah, I would love to, to do it. This was yeah. a little bit longer. It's about maybe a minute and okay. a half longer. Okay. But um, it's an invitation for us all to come to that place. The book I wrote was called Wild Love, Kissed into Consciousness. And you say, why kissed into consciousness? Because a kiss is the sweetest, most tender thing I can imagine ever giving to another human being. And there is more information exchanged in a single kiss than in all the words that we could ever hope to convey to each other. And what's being said is harmlessness, tenderness, sweet, enduring love. And so this is an invitation to fall in love or rise in love. Welcome to the tree of life. Welcome to the tree of life. 
Let's climb the vines of each other's minds and go out on a limb of love together where we can more easily rub elbows with eternity as we carve each other's names into a heart of light etched from the funny bone of the moon. <laughs> One drink from this cup of destiny and you'll disappear with me into the mystery of why our hearts refuse to be apart. And so keep on sending each other love letters of light in the form of falling stars, fireflies, and your smile to light up my night while our souls dance the hula hoop with the sparkling rings of Saturn. Because when we kiss like this, wild and untamed, without a thought of what anyone in this world might think of us, it's like having the divine audacity to binge drink shot glasses of 100 proof holy water <laughs> and let laughter be our cosmic chaser until we're all drunk with Darshan and detached from every image or concept that seeks to give love a shape or form. Play hooky from your have tos. You know you want to, so play hooky from your have-tos and take one more sip of these ruby red lips and we'll become the voice of the wilderness and the innocence of every creature playing hide and seek with the one behind the billion blazing suns pulsating in the indescribability of each movement of lip and tongue quickly while no one else is looking let's slip into the shadows of another dimension together where our daydreams are making love to our fantasies and giving birth to whole new realities inside each breath and heartbeat a frontier of forgiveness where your happiness is my garden of eden and the paradise of parted lips is where we tongue wrestle each other's tenderness into luminous starshine waterfalls whirl pulling their way into infinity's glowing giggling navel as a shameless display of my affection for you i have graffitied your essence into every cosmos river tree and rock with the skill of an ancient artist for you, just for you, I have willingly jumped off the cliff of consciousness without a parachute of reason, diving face first into the event horizon of every black hole, fishing for bits and pieces of forgotten truth, which I have fashioned for you here as this priceless verse and golden honesty and now here I am upon bended knee proposing to you will you marry freedom with me will you marry freedom with me come on let's elope into ecstasy we can have a honeymoon on the visceral shores of venus complete with angel winged excursions into the mystic oases of mars or better yet take one more drink with me from that fountain of fascination and let's become the intoxicating wine of intimacy and spike the whole world's reservoirs with equal parts of magic and mischief until everyone is naked of the need to fit in naked of the need to fit in and marathoning themselves into kamikaze kissing contests where everyone wins in the end because if we love each other without shame everyone wins in the end so come here you but come in close and let's start a love illusion with our lips and leave this dry world drowning in the drink of a desire to kiss this life like it were a love affair and every being our beloved let's kiss this life 
like it were a love affair, and every being our beloved. Wow. Uh, They want to join pinkies again, so. <laughs> Give someone a hug and a kiss. That's always a good way to have an intermission, I believe. That poem goes on, but I didn't want to go on because I wanted to be sensitive to your time. But um, the invitation is there, and the invitation is if we can but be in love, that takes care of all those rules, all those things that the prophets were supposedly saying was, love yourself and love the people around you. And I'm really inspired by the Hopi prophecy. Have you heard the most recent Hopi prophecy? They release prophecies quite frequently about the new consciousness. And their most recent one spoke to me on such a deep level. It said, you have been telling the people for a long time that it is the 11th hour. Now you must go and tell the people that it is the hour. And there are things that should be considered. Where are you living? What kind of friendships are you involved in? Are you in right relation? know your garden where is your water the elders say that there is a great river of change that is sweeping across this planet and there will be many who are frightened by the rate of change and they'll seek to cling to the shores but the hopi say let go of the shores push yourself off into the center of the river keep your head above water see who is around you and celebrate because the river has a destination and finally, they say that the time of the lone wolf is over and that we must know our communities. Now is the time for us to not look outside of ourselves for the leader. And I believe that this can be a good time. I believe that it's a time for us to emerge in this world in a way that really gives everyone a chance to forget everything anyone ever taught them about right or wrong, to forget everything anyone ever said about good or bad, beautiful or ugly and just dance, just laugh and sing and celebrate the beauty, the authenticity that we discover from what I call a conversation, a conversational garden where we cultivate our permaculture, our personalities into a kind of crop of kindness that sustainably feeds the whole world because in actuality, as far as anyone knows, the heart is still the best source of renewable clean energy. Yeah, we're always talking about energy. Yeah. They know about it. Yeah, they, well, they got all their pinkies together. So right. They were on fire over they're, there. They're rising in love. No, they were on fire when they got here. They so were. I mean, so I mean, they're, they're divine rascals. They really are. So, if people are listening, mm -hmm. and you know, over time, mm -hmm. I assume you know millions will listen, and they're saying, "Okay, mm -hmm. you know, I, I feel better. I feel enlivened. I feel yes." You know that I want to lead a mm -hmm. life with less concept, less division, more freedom, more tolerance, more love. Yes. You know. Yes. I'm. Mm -hmm. I'm. I'm. Mm -hmm. How do I do it from this moment forward? My first advice to anyone listening is go into nature. Find a place in the wilderness where there are no people, where there are no cars, where there is no concrete. It's so different here than it is in Hawaii. I live very beautifully in Hawaii for the last few years I've lived in a tree as I was telling you off the grid on 40 acres of, with 17 waterfalls my morning bath is a dip in the crystal clear stream my lunch comes from a garden that I've grown myself my food comes from the fruit trees that grow around me and I will go sometimes a whole month without seeing other human beings in the context of busy hurry go go so what I recommend first is a return to nature a return to what I call commune vacation communication this is the place where you go and the voice of the wilderness John the Baptist was called the voice of the wilderness well there is a voice in the wilderness and it's not John the Baptist it's your own beautiful beating heart and you can see it it pervades every molecule every breath every heartbeat every movement of mind and limb in nature there is harmony in nature there is a total connection to what I call the source nexus which is the place where all expressions of existence merge into a single quintessence so if they want to really do something for themselves for their future generations go into the woods go into the forest go to listen to the wind as my grandmother would say we're all prophets we just haven't all remembered how to listen to the wind yet and as your previous guests have said we already know everything there is to know Einstein himself said you know everything you need to know all you have to do is remember it and listen to what nature is saying and the second thing I would say is remember your dreams 
remember your dreams really remember your dreams the average person dreams on average six years out of their life and they have amnesia for most of that time what's happening I believe that dreams are the nexus point through which our souls experience every possible version of reality the all at once time the everywhere within each being every night when we close our eyes our subconscious mind goes non-local and it connects to that infinite nexus of creativity and intelligence and if people will but give themselves a moment for intra-personal communication, intra meaning within. I, I taught for a long time at Cal State Long Beach. I taught in, in communications there and in philosophy. And I learned that if we could just learn to go within ourselves, learn to communicate to that voice that is already within, that we can begin to see ourselves emerge. Because Jesus didn't become Jesus by pretending to be Moses, and Buddha didn't become Buddha by pretending to be, um, you know, Lao, Lao, Lao Tzu or whoever was in his community. We become what we are by when we actually have the experience. When we actually have the experience uh -oh. of awakening, <laughs> it's not into anyone but ourselves right. fully. And right? there's no name. And there's no name. And there's no tradition. And there's no pretense. There's just authenticity and a humility, a humility that comes along with that, that really does say to every heart, my heart embraces your heart and my soul kisses your soul. You know, it's just the, uh, the vibration of the infinite and the inclusive, which is not the two things that people are putting out now exactly. so how can we more and more put out that energy mm -hmm. that quantum energy just by vibrating just if by you're vibrating. by vibrating the infinite and the inclusive then that's it exactly exactly and be in love always. well I think if you're doing those two I think you'll be very close to what you would define as Rumi love. once said whatever you do and wherever you go be a lover always and if you have not loved and been loved in return then count not your life as having been lived, for it will not matter in the end. So be a lover. <laughs> Let me give you a hug and a kiss in a minute. <laughs> and uh, I think that if we can return to that sense of really realizing that the fountain of youth is in friendship, that the fountain of youth is in fascination and wonder, and not acknowledging this procession of time as we consider there's no such thing as time in space it's an illusion let's open the non-local window for a moment we'll sneak into another space and time and realize that we are if we could see what we really are we would know that it's all right for us to express in our fullness the same great power that created everything in existence but still let our hearts be humble and we'll know that it doesn't matter what the rest of the world thinks of us or of how much pain we've managed to store up in that place that no one else knows about because these tears are our living water that fertilize the soil of our souls. And I think more than anything, the story gets in the way. But this is the moment in the movie of our life where the main characters, all you, by the way, decide to give fate a break from calling all the shots and gets to sit in the director's chair seat of our destiny's unscripted docudrama style love story, which is set to explore the skin thin contrast between being an immortal inner energy and this great uncharted experience of discovery, self rediscovery in each other. The question is, if you were to meet God in another skin, would you recognize God? If you were to meet yourself as another aspect, would you recognize yourself? And the clarity comes, the recognition comes when we're in love, when we begin to rise in that state of love, a state of beauty and fascination, a childlike state, a second innocence, one that is not precluded upon ignorance, which one that yeah, says it's not childish. It's, it's not childish. childish. It knows that the world can be hard. It knows yeah, it that knows the world what can it be hard. on your driver's license. Exactly. <laughs> but it, it's not. Yeah, right. But yeah. simultaneously, it right. says it's, it's that discernment as a child. Exactly, and it gives us that that al the true alchemy, not the turning of lead into gold, but the turning of darkness into light, of pain into beauty, and the great ability to give this world permission once again liberate themselves from that self-imposed prison of the personality that may yeah, believe what we call ego what we call ego and I want to encourage people even to approach the ego with a sense of compassion we, we talk about killing the ego well what if we hugged it instead our pain well, we don't have to separate we can just see what it exactly we, if we embrace our pain and our joy 
we give them both permission to become bliss. Or we don't, we're almost experiencing that way, but actually we're coming to the end of this yeah. particular thing, so we can hug in a little while. Oh, right. or walk. So oh, right. if anybody wants inf information about Dreaming Bear, the art project, his books, his CDs, where he's going to be, uh, his website, the, you know, the Heaven to Earth Healing Art Project. Just call me, Alan, 805-687-2053, 805-687-2053. We love you. Good night. God bless you.